taking the right. But we have brothers. We have a brother in another cemetery. We have two brothers here. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Merci de vous lever pour l'arrivée de la délégation officielle. Please remain standing and render appropriate honors as we receive the remains. And remain standing for the French and American national anthems. Merci de rester debout et rendez les honneurs appropriés lorsque nous recevrons l'inconnu. Et merci de rester en place pour les hymnes nationaux.
Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Cleet A. Barclay, Command Chaplain, United States Air Force Europe and Africa, will now provide today's invocation. L'invocation du Colonel Cleet A. Barclay, aumônier de Force Aérienne Américaine en Europe et en Afrique. Merciful God, we are humbled to gather on sacred soil today to honor a fallen soldier. We honor an individual who is nameless to us, but not nameless to you. Oh God, we give thanks for this doughboy's willingness to serve a greater good, his commitment to put the needs of others first, and for his supreme sacrifice, which ultimately ended his mortal journey. God, bless all who made today possible, and all who are here and online to participate. Grant us feelings of peace and gratitude. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Barclay. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. My name is Ryan Blum, Deputy Director of Cemetery Operations at the American Battle Monuments Commission and today's Master of Ceremony. Je m'appelle Ryan Blum, Director Adjoint des Operations pour the American Battle Monuments Commission, and je suis le maître de cérémonie aujourd'hui. It is my privilege to introduce this ceremony's host, Mr. Raymond D. Kemp, Sr., Commissioner, American Battle Minds Commission, who provide today's welcome remarks. C'est un honor pour moi de vous présenter l'hôte de cette cérémonie, Mr. Raymond D. Kemp, Sr., membre du comité de direction de l'American Battle Minds Commission, qui va vous présenter son message de bienvenue. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, let me help you. I'll say good afternoon, you say good afternoon back. Good afternoon. It is my family custom that when we attend a ceremony, we consider it an opportunity to celebrate the life of someone. And what great pleasure it is, even on this day, uh, to celebrate the life lived in honor of a great effort, which is why we are here collected today. I am Raymond Kemp, a member of the American Battle Monuments Commission. It is truly an honor to welcome you to today's service, to pay our humble final respects to an American soldier. 
Our commission is the caretaker of these beautiful grounds, and we are the guardians of those buried here. We do so on behalf of the American people, on land granted to us by the French, a symbol of a lasting bond between our two nations. In March 1918, after 19 American soldiers had been killed during a German artillery bombardment of a trench position, American poet Joyce Kilmer, a member of the 42nd Rainbow Division, wrote a poem he titled Rouge Bouquet. In a woods they call the Rouge Bouquet, there is a new-made grave today, built by never a spade nor pick, yet covered with earth, 10 meters thick. There lie many fighting men, dead in their youthful prime, never to laugh or love again, or taste of the summertime, for death came flying through the air and stopped his flight at the door stair. Touched his prey, left them there, clay to clay. Four months later, on July 30th, Sergeant Kilmer, too, fell not far from where we stand today. Now he lies at rest in these hallowed grounds. Plot B, row nine, grave 15. We know Joyce Kilmer's story, we do not know the story of the soldier we honor today. As with many of his comrades, he could not be identified. But we know this. He answered when his nation called. He crossed an ocean to a land he likely did not know. To fight for a cause he may not have fully understood, yet this devotion to duty ultimately brought him to this day. This afternoon, we bury him in his final resting place among his comrades in arms. While the headstone will read, here rests in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God, he is no longer alone. Joyce Kilmer poem, poem goes on to say, there is no earth, no worthier grave to hold the bodies of the brave than this place of pain and pride where they nobly fought and nobly died. From this day, this soldier will lie in honor on these beautiful, hallowed grounds. There is no worthier grave. In the words of our first chairman and this soldier's American Expeditionary Forces commander, General John Pershing, time will not dim the glory of his deeds. Thank you for your presence here today to give final honors to this American soldier. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kim. In July and August of 1918, during the Second Battle of the Marne, Allied forces conducted a massive counterattack against the last major German offensive of the war. The assault involved over 300,000 American troops, of which 50,000 would become casualties. The peaceful countryside that surrounds us resembles little to what it did that summer. The rolling farm fields, devastated by heavy artillery. The villages and towns, reduced to ruins. Between the 26th of July and the 4th of August, the 42nd Rainbow Division assaulted through this area on a six-kilometer front from the town of ferrantat de noir and Siege. Inside every thicket of trees, in every abandoned farmhouse, enemy snipers and fortified machine gun positions lied in wait. The infantrymen of the 42nd would have no other option but to assault fortified enemy positions by crossing open and exposed terrain, charging headfirst into overlapping fields of enemy machine gun fire. The fighting ended up close, personal, hand-to-hand -hand with bayonets and trench knives. After the 42nd seized ground, the enemy would respond with artillery barrages, aerial bombardments, and gas attacks that wiped out entire units. During only 10 days of combat, the 42nd suffered nearly 7,000 dead and wounded. And for the remainder of the war, no other campaign would so decimate the Rainbow Division. The war dead that could be recovered were buried in temporary battlefield cemeteries. Follow-on grave registration personnel tasked with locating and consolidating the remains had to rely on often inaccurate reports and hastily drawn grave location maps. 
Considering the monumental and unprecedented tasks set before them, these personnel were tremendously successful and fulfilled their duty to their country and their comrades. However, 4,000 Americans from the First World War remain missing. 105 years later, four kilometers from this location, on the afternoon of the 8th of February, 2022, a local undertaker, Monsieur Jean-Paul Feval, in the village cemetery of villiers sur fer discovered human remains, along with numerous American Expeditionary Force field kit items that included a U.S. Model 1917 helmet, a U.S. Model trench knife, World War I era stretcher bearer handles, and 30-06 ammunition still in their carrying pouches. Over the course of nearly a year, representatives of the United States, France, and the British Commonwealth worked together to prove this individual was an American soldier, that he perished as a result of wounds suffered in combat, and that he is entitled to a full honors burial under the flag for which he fought and died. Today, June 7th, 2023, this soldier's century-long journey finally comes to an end. We reunite him here with his 6,000 comrades who never made it home, including the nearly 600 other American soldiers known but to God. We reaffirm our country's commitment to never leave a fallen comrade, to honor an individual that not only lost his life, but his identity. Most importantly, today, a grateful nation begins the eternal duty of maintaining his grave, lest we forget. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce today's senior French military representative, General Eric Bello de Minière, Inspector General, French Army. C'est un honneur pour moi de vous présenter le général d'armée Eric Bello de Minière, Inspector General de l'Armée de Terre Française. Mesdames et Messieurs les élus, Monsieur le Préfet, Madame la Sous-Préfète, Mesdames et Messieurs les Officiers Généraux, Mesdames et Messieurs, Chers amis américains, chers amis de toutes nations, à la fin de 1917, pour la première fois de leur jeune histoire, les États-Unis d'Amérique s'engagent, à l'appel de leurs alliés français et britanniques, dans un conflit majeur extérieur au territoire américain. Pendant plus d'un an, les forces américaines seront de tous les combats sur les champs de bataille dont les noms marqueront à jamais l'histoire militaire des États-Unis d'Amérique. En mars 1918, alors que le Friedensturm, la grande offensive allemande qui doit décider du sort de la guerre, est déclenché, le général Pershing déclare au général Foch « Je viens » pour vous dire que le peuple américain tiendrait pour un grand honneur que nos troupes fussent engagées dans la présente bataille. Je vous le demande en mon nom et au sien. Infanterie, artillerie, aviation, tout ce que nous avons est à vous. Disposez-en disposez comme il vous plaira. Il en viendra encore d'autres, aussi nombreux qu'il sera nécessaire. Je suis venu tout exprès pour vous dire que le peuple américain sera fier d'être engagé dans la plus grande bataille de l'histoire. Cette bataille dans laquelle s'engage le corps expéditionnaire américain à l'été 1918 consiste d'abord en deux mois d'âpres combats défensifs face à un ennemi aguerri. En Champagne, près d'ici, près de Château-Thierry, la troisième division d'infanterie gagne son surnom de Rock of the Marne. Alors qu'un peu plus loin, la deuxième division d'infanterie tient ferme au bois Bello, Sur le champ de bataille de Verdun, où tant de sang français a coulé en 1916, les troupes américaines reconquièrent le village de Vaux et la rive droite de la Meuse. Partout, au prix de pertes sévères, les soldats américains enrayent la progression allemande. Puis vient l'automne 1918 et l'offensive alliée qui porte le dernier coup de boutoir 
à des forces allemandes exsangues et décide du sort de la guerre. La première armée américaine compte dans ses rangs quatre corps d'armée. L'un est français. Ceci montre la confiance réciproque née dans les combats communs et qui sera le véritable ciment de l'amitié franco-américaine au XXe siècle. The First Alliance. En septembre 1918, Américains et Français, côte à côte, remportent la bataille du saillant de Saint-Miguel. Les Allemands leur abandonnent plus de 13 000 prisonniers, 460 pièces d'artillerie. Dix jours plus tard, s'engage l'offensive de Meuse-Argonne, cet assaut massif et décisif qui précipite la fin de la Grande Guerre. Lorsque le clairon sonne la fin des combats, le 11 novembre 1918, les États-Unis ont mobilisé plus de 4 millions d'hommes. 126 000 Américains sont tombés en France. 230 000 autres ont été blessés et près de 5 000 manquent à l'appel et sont portés disparus. Dans les années qui suivent, les corps des soldats tombés en France sont inhumés sur le sol qu'ils ont contribué à libérer au prix de leur sang dans des nécropoles devenues, comme ici, terre américaine. Parmi ces corps, celui d'un soldat non identifié est choisi le 24 octobre 1921 pour rejoindre le cimetière d'Arlington et symboliser le sacrifice de tous les Américains tombés en France. Avant qu'il ne prenne la mer pour retrouver définitivement le sol de sa patrie, André Maginot, ministre des Pensions de la République française, lui-même héroïque, sous-officier d'infanterie durant la bataille de Verdun, décore de la Légion d'honneur ce cercueil du soldat inconnu. Par ce geste exceptionnel, il témoigne de la reconnaissance de la France à ceux qui sont venus combattre à ses côtés jusqu'à la victoire finale. Aujourd'hui, la terre de France nous rend le corps d'un autre, autre de ces soldats portés disparus, mais qui, lui, n'a jamais été oublié. À la suite d'entrée Maginot, il nous donne l'occasion de témoigner une nouvelle fois de notre reconnaissance pour le sacrifice consenti par les États-Unis. Ce sacrifice, la France, vieille nation militaire, qui paya sa victoire sur l'Allemagne du sang d'un million quatre cent mille des siens, le mesure mieux que tout autre. Les soldats américains qui ont participé à ce conflit ont démontré un courage et un dévouement exemplaires en défendant les valeurs qui sont chères à nos deux nations, être ici aujourd'hui, dans ce cimetière d'Oise haine, c'est rendre hommage à ces valeurs communes à nos deux armées. C'est d'abord le patriotisme. Les soldats américains d'un seul bloc ont répondu à l'appel de leur pays avec un profond sens du devoir. Ils ont quitté leur foyer pour défendre les idéaux de liberté, de démocratie et de justice auxquels ils croyaient. C'est ensuite le courage, ce courage extraordinaire sur les champs de bataille, sortant à l'heure voulue des tranchées pour monter dans la mitraille à l'assaut des positions de l'adversaire. Malgré ces dangers, ils ont continué à se battre avec bravo. C'est encore la fraternité d'armes. Ils ont partagé au quotidien les fardeaux et les dangers. Cette camaraderie, cette solidarité, cette cohésion, ces forces morales ont été essentielles pour surmonter les épreuves et emporter la victoire. Car c'est toujours l'âme qui gagne les batailles. C'est aussi la résilience. Endurant des combats acharnés, souvent au corps à corps, des privations, des maladies, ils sont restés forts et déterminés pour remplir avec abnégation et une rigueur absolue la mission sacrée qui leur avait été confiée. C'est enfin le sacrifice. Ce sacrifice ultime consenti par des millions de soldats pour le seul front occidental, américain, français, britannique et allemand mêlé. Ils ont donné leur vie pour défendre leurs idéaux, honorer l'histoire partagée avec les États-Unis et la France depuis l'engagement de Lafayette sur le sol de la jeune nation américaine. Pour autant, ce conflit mondial dévastateur 
ne fut malheureusement pas le dernier. Il fallut encore l'engagement de soldats américains, moins de 20 ans plus tard, pour remporter la victoire sur l'Allemagne nazie. Cet héritage commun doit continuer de nous inspirer et nous oblige. C'est ce sang mêlé sur les champs de bataille et ces valeurs partagées qui constituent le bouclier de nos nations devant les épreuves de l'histoire. Pensons-y toujours, notamment à l'heure où la guerre fait son retour en Europe. Fiers de notre histoire commune et glorieuse, restons prêts, tournés vers l'avenir, confiants, mais résolus à nous montrer dignes de nos anciens pour le succès de nos armes et la défense de nos nations. Gloire et honneur aux soldats américains. Gloire et honneur aux soldats français. God bless America. Vive la France. Merci, mon général. Ladies and gentlemen, today's senior U.S. military representative, General James Charles McConville, Chief of Staff, United States Army, will now deliver his address. Madame, Monsieur, le général James Charles McConville, chef d'état major de l'armée de terre des États-Unis, va maintenant vous présenter son discours. Bonjour and, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and, and all distinguished guests, and thank you so much for being here for this important ceremony. Today, we gather here to honor the remains of an unknown American World War I soldier. We pay tribute to this brave soldier who gave his life for his country for the cause of democracy and freedom. And as we stand here, we can, cannot help but think about the sacrifices that this soldier made. He left behind his family, his friends, and his loved ones to fight for his country and our allies. He faced the horrors of war, the fear of death, and the uncertainty of the future. But despite all these challenges, he remained steadfast and committed to his duty. He fought with courage, he fought with honor, and he fought with dignity. And yet, despite all his bravery and sacrifice, the soldier remains unknown to us. We do not know his name, his age, or his background. But even though we do not know these details, we do know one thing for certain. This soldier was a hero. He was a hero because he embodied the values of courage and honor. He was a hero be because he fought for a purpose that was greater than himself. And he was a hero because he gave the ultimate sacrifice on the battlefield for the cause of freedom. So today we honor this unknown soldier with the utmost respect and gratitude. We honor him for his contribution in shaping the world we live today. And as we pay our respects, We also remember all the soldiers who fought and died in World War I. Today, our soldiers strive every day to live up to the legacy of the heroes who have served before them. We are grateful for all our allies represented by everyone present today and for those who assisted in the recovery of this soldier. Today, we ensure that those who sacrifice their lessons to preserve the freedom we have today are never forgotten. God bless this soldier and all those soldiers who serve our nations to protect our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, General McConville. And now, General McConville and Wazen American Cemetery Superintendent Bert Cloud will present the Purple Heart Medal. The General McConville, ainsi que le Superintendent du Cimetière Américain Wazen, Monsieur Bert Cloud, will maintenant remettre the Purple Heart. The Purple Heart is a United States military decoration awarded to members of the armed forces who are wounded or killed in action. It is one of the oldest military awards still in use today, tracing its history back to General George Washington and the Revolutionary War. La Pepe Art 
et en décoration militaire américaine, remise aux membres de forces armées blessés ou tués au combat. C'est l'une des plus anciennes décorations militaires encore en usage de nos jours, remontant au général Washington et à la guerre d'indépendance. Revived in 1932, on the 200th anniversary of General Washington's birthday, it has been awarded to thousands of service members and is highly regarded as a symbol of sacrifice and bravery. Remise au goût du jour en 1932, à l'occasion de 200 ans du General Washington, elle a été remise à des militaires et vu comme un symbole de sacrifice et de bravoure. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The funeral procession will now march to the gravesite. You are encouraged to follow behind the procession, but please wait until your row is called by the ushers. La procession va débuter vers le lieu de sépulture. Vous êtes invité à nous suivre, mais je vous prie de patienter que votre rangée soit appelée par notre personnel. It is requested that you do not impede the procession route, and that everyone maintains a level of silence and respect. Nous vous prions de ne pas gêner le parcours, de vous déplacer en toute solennité tout au long de la procession. During the procession, we will commemorate our unknown's legacy with a special tribute of the firing of a French 75mm field gun. À l'occasion de cette procession, nous allons commémorer l'héritage de ces soldats inconnus par un salut au canon réalisé par le canon de 75. As the sound of the cannon echoes through the air, let us remember and honor this unknown and all those who have served our country with valor. May their sacrifices never be forgotten and may their memories live on. Forever. Alors que le son nom du canon résonne dans les airs, remémorons-nous et honorons ces temps que nous et ceux qui ont servi notre pays avec valeur. Que leur sacrifice ne soit jamais oublié et que le mémoire vive à jamais.
Ready, step. 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 Forward, march. March time, march, stairs, halt. Ready, step. 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 Ready, step.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Chaplain Barclay will now perform his interment services and deliver his benediction. Mesdames, Messieurs, merci de vous ce soir. L'Omigné Barclay va désormais officier et nous reciter sa bénédiction. We are here today to place the remains of a soldier known but to God. In his final resting place, his remains join more than 6,000 others whose headstones serve as memorials to their deaths. The memorials that surround us are also reminders of life, of life well lived. They symbolize the most noble of human impulses, lives in giving, lives of sacrifice for higher purposes, for places like America and France, and for a purpose called freedom. They are reminders that our lives are to be lived to the fullest, that every moment is important, that in the words of the book of Ecclesiastes, nothing is better for us than to rejoice and to do good in our lives. As the grandson of an American doughboy who served, whose unit served in this region of France, oh, how I wish I could share personal information about this unknown soldier. I wish I could tell you where he was born, who his mother, father, brothers, and or sisters were. Perhaps we could speak of his wife and children too. I wish I could tell you what made him laugh, or of the hobbies that occupied his interests. Oh, how I yearn to know about his aspirations in life. I would want to share how he bravely faced fears and endured pain so that others may live with freedom and liberty. But alas, I cannot. For the time being, his identity reminds, remains a mystery to us. However, I am so thankful that his influence did not end upon his mortal death. His mother, father, and family lived with greater purpose, knowing that he passed on before them. His classmates, friends, and fellow soldiers knew of his hobbies and thought of him when they saw things he was passionate about. Many found peace of mind when they remembered his laugh and took courage to pursue their ambitions since he could not. Allied nations took note of his willingness to die and were more courageous and resolute in their fight for freedom and liberty. Even though we may not know much of the person we honor today, let us rest assured that there is one that knows all about this soldier. From the book of Psalms we are reminded the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. He watches all his paths. As we gather on this hallowed ground in the shadows of death, I'd like to recall the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's my prayer that any time in your life, as you walk in any shadows of death, that you will sense the presence and comfort of God, who is our Good Shepherd. Lastly, in light of past, present, and potentially future wars, let us take to heart words found in Revelation 21, where it says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Let us all look forward with faith until that blessed day. For now, into the continued mercy of Almighty God, we commit the remains of this soldier, known only to God, to this final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through the Messiah. Merciful and gracious God, we give you thanks for our time to commemorate one of your children. Thank you for the goodness and truth that passed from him into the lives of others and made the world a richer place by his presence. Lord of mercies and God of all comfort, look down in compassion upon any whose joy has been turned into sorrow and mourning. Enable them to find their refuge and strength in you to know you are a very present help in our most de desperate time of need. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to give you peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to render appropriate funeral honors and taps. Madame, Monsieur, merci de vous lever pour les salles d'honneur et les sonneries aux morts américaines. You may be seated. The burial flag will now be presented to General McConville, who is acting in place of this unknown's next of kin. Merci de vous s'asseoir. Le drapeau va maintenant être présenté au General McConville, représentant les proches de ces soldats inconnus.
Ready? Face. Forward. March. Sir, on behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of appreciation for this unknown American soldier's honorable and faithful service. General McConville will now donate the flag to the village of villiers sofer Accepting the flag on the village's behalf is Mr. De Lyon, Mayor of villiers sofer Le Général d'Armée McConville va maintenant offrir ce drapeau au village de villiers sofer en le remontant à son représentant, Mr. De Lyon, Mayor de villiers sofer Ladies and gentlemen, we will symbolize the deep connection between the United States and France by two children laying flowers. Mesdames et Messieurs, deux enfants, un Français et un Américain, pour maintenant déposer les fleurs afin de symboliser le lien étroit entre les États-Unis et la France. These children, Adrien Baudouin, 10 year old son of Mathieu et Anna Baudouin of France, and Haiti Marceau, seven year old daughter of Casey and Amanda Marceau of United States. Ses enfants, Adrien Baudouin, 10 ans, fils de Mathieu et Anna Baudouin de France, et Heidi Marceau, 7 ans, fille de Casey et Amanda Marceau des États-Unis. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the official party will now lay white roses in a final farewell. Mesdames, Messieurs, les membres de la délégation officielle vont maintenant déposer des roses blanches pour un dernier au revoir. White Rose is symbolic of the unknown's connection with the unknown in Arlington National Cemetery, who in 1921 was chosen by Army Sergeant Edward Younger by a bouquet of white roses. La Rose Blanche is a parallel symbolique entre ces soldats inconnus avec les soldats inconnus du Cimetière National d'Arlington, qui en 1921 fut choisi par le Sergeant de l'Armée de Terre américaine Edward Younger en déposant on bouquet de rose blanche.
Wise and American Cemetery groundskeepers, Mathieu Baudouin and Philippe Fernandez will lay a bouquet of roses grown here at the cemetery. The red flowers symbolize the poem Rouge Bouquet by Joyce Kilmer, who was buried here in Plot B, Row 9, Grave 15. And maintenant, Mathieu Baudouin and Philippe Fernandez, au nom de l'équipe de Wazen, vont déposer un bouquet de roses provenant de ce cimetière, symbolisant le poème Rouge Bouquet, écrit en 1918 par la sergent Joyce Kilmer, qui est enterré au plan B, rangé 9, tombe 15. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You're invited to pay a quiet respect to the unknown and visit the grounds of the cemetery. Please be advised that the cemetery will be exceptionally closing at 3 p.m. Thank you for attending. Mesdames, Messieurs, ceci conclut cette cérémonie. Vous êtes invité à rendre un hommage silencieux à l'inconnu et à visiter le cimetière. Veuillez noter que le cimetière sera fermé à 15 heures. Nous vous remercions pour votre présence. serve this nation. And there are many ways our organizations work together to accomplish this important mission. Since 1923, the ABMC has served a special role memorializing American armed forces overseas. Today, ABMC administers permanent American burial grounds and separate memorials, monuments, and markers at sites around the world. Stretching from the Philippines and Korea across the Pacific to Midway and Hawaii, in North Africa, Gibraltar, Italy, France, England, and here at home, the ABMC honors those who served the U.S. military overseas, many of whom gave the ultimate sacrifice. Since 1934, the National Archives has served as the nation's record keeper, preserving the permanent records of the U.S. government for future generations. At archival facilities around our country, our staff work daily to provide researchers and other government agencies access to the over 13 billion pages, 448 million feet of film, 10 million maps, charts, and drawings, and hundreds of terabytes of electronic records in our custody. Many of these records document actions and service commemorated by the ABMC. At the National Personnel Records Center and National Archives in St. Louis, we hold the official military personnel files World War I burial files, individual deceased personnel files, casualty records, and other personnel-related records for all those 
who served in the US military. These records often assist ABMC with ceremonies, burials, updating headstones, and verifying information of those service members interred in ABMC cemeteries. Within the halls of this building and in the National Archives in College Park, Maryland, just a few miles from here, we hold the unit records and other related military records that document the US military's role and activities in every major conflict in our nation's history. In fact, this evening's film includes archival footage from the National Archives. The work you do is immensely valuable, and as such, we also hold the historical records of the ABMC itself. Just this past year alone, ABMC sent the National Archives records on World War I and World War II American cemeteries, the Korean War Veterans Memorial, publications, and other records for permanent preservation. The National Archives and Records Administration looks forward to working with the ABMC in the second century of its important work. Again, let me welcome you to today's national documentary premiere. And now, I would like to introduce Secretary of the American Battle Monuments Commission, Charles K. DeJoux. Secretary DeJoux was appointed to serve in this role this past May by President Joseph R. Biden. The 20-year Army Reserve veteran holds the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and among many other assignments, served in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2011 and 2012. He represented Hawaii's first congressional district as a member of Congress, serving on the House Armed Services Committee and House Budget Committee. Secretary DeJoux has been an active civic leader in the Hawaii State House of Representatives and Honolulu City Council, and has served as an educator at both the University of Hawaii and Hawaii Pacific University. Since his appointment, Secretary DeJoux has worked to set the agency on the path for a new century of service, focused on the seamless integration of the ABMC's core mission with emerging technology and focused engagement. Please join me in welcoming ABMC Secretary Charles K. DeJoux. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the commissioners of the American Battle Monuments Commission, our staff, and of course, the American people, good evening and welcome. I'm Charles DeGioia, and delighted to introduce all of you to our 100th anniversary of the ABMC. Um, before I begin, I want to give special thanks, of course, to the National Archives and for hosting us here and for uh, allowing us to be in this beautiful building with, of course, America's founding documents. Um, it is a delight for myself and my staff to have each and every one of you here. I do also want to recognize a few people in attendance. We have Ambassador Nicole Brittner Bengshin from Luxembourg, Madam Ambassador, uh, as well as uh, Ambassador Residence Karen Price, the British Ambassador to the United States. I also want to introduce our ABMC Commission Chairman, Lieutenant General Hurtling, who is joining us here this evening. I also want to give a special recognition to each of our commissioners who are joining us here, uh, please say hello to them if you haven't met them. Uh, Commissioner Gail Barry West, Commissioner Dale Dorgan, Commissioner John Estrada, Commissioner Matthew Jones, Commissioner Raymond Kemp, Commissioner Amy Looney Heffernan, Commissioner Bud Pettigrew, Commissioner Michael Smith, and Commissioner Dan Woodward. And we also have Commissioner Dan uh, Groberg, Flo Groberg, who unfortunately was not able to join us tonight. <coughs> Also joining us here this evening, I'm delighted to introduce uh, Tom Connor, the author of War and Remembrance, uh, who did a history of the American Battle of Monuments Commission. Uh, also with us, you will meet uh, later on this evening, Gretchen Ronka, the daughter of First Lieutenant Lauren Hintz, who is buried at the Florence American Cemetery. And with so many distinguished guests, including former uh, ABMC Secretary, retired Major General Bill Matz, uh, with us here in the tent, and several of our former commissioners, uh, we are here to commemorate uh, the mission and the memories of the American Battle Minds Commission and our honorable and sacred mission. Um.